Good evening. My name is Roger Clare. I'm honored to be mayor of Baltimore. I'm here tonight to uh, lead this presentation about refuse control. What? Something's wrong with the mic. Is this better? This isn't a rock and roll band, you know. I, so hug the mic. Anyway, I'd like to, one, many of you have probably been here for the first time. This is Bowling Brooks Community Center. It used to be Living Waters Church. Uh, Living Waters bought this from the village. The land was donated to the village some 30-some years ago. Living Waters wanted to build a church, so we sold it to them. They, in fact, built a church, and then they grew in it. That's why this is really three phases here. This is the last addition to that church, and they outgrew this. They wanted to move, and they built a church over on um, Lily Cash, directly behind Tony's Fresh Market. <laughs> So I told the pastor that if they did move, I wanted to write a refusal on this building to get it back. And we did purchase it back. And it's now our community center. And it houses the Chamber of Commerce. It houses the veterans of VFW and the American Legion. There's a lot of youth activities take place in here. And a lot of people use this room. Uh, the sound system isn't so good, as you can tell. We're looking for funds to maybe equip it and put in some baffling. but. It is open to the public to use, and you typically schedule through the Chamber of Commerce office if you're interested in doing it. We've had a number of meetings and events in here over the last few years. Tonight, we're here to talk about refuse, garbage, and as somebody kiddingly said, we're going to talk trash tonight. It's an issue that's been going on. I've been discussing it off and on for probably 20 plus years. I'm going to go into the history of our program briefly. There will not be a decision made tonight, I'm sure, but we are going to be closer to a decision because it's just gone on too long and we've got to bring closure to this issue. Basically, the issue this evening is whether or not to have one of these or the bag program, which we've had here in Bolingbrook for some 40-some years. There's advantages and disadvantages to both. I'm going to try and highlight those. If you've got a question, I'll try and deal with that, or others the President will. I'd like to introduce some people with us tonight. Uh, our village clerk, Carol Pinnings, taking minutes. Judy Singer with Bolingbrook Community Television. Matt Eastman, our Director of Planning. Jim Bowen, the Village Attorney. Lucas Rickleman, the Director of Public Services, who uh, administers the refuse contract. Frank Hildegans with Groot, and John Myers with Groot. Frank's a gentleman we negotiate contracts with. John Myers is on the street here every day in Bolingbrook, making sure what they do is done well, and picking up and taking care of any problems that might arise. I'll go back to Groot more in a moment. We also have with us the village board this evening in its entirety. Trustee Rick Morales, Trustee Mike Lawler, Deputy Mayor, Trustee Maria Zarate, Trustee Teresa Hoagland, Trustee Sheldon Watts, and Trustee Bob Jesuits. They are here listening. I don't know if they'll have questions or comments. That's up to them. This is a very serious issue because the decision will cost money. Toters will lease for about $350 per toter per month. This is the garbage or refuse container. This is the recycling container. 95 gallons, 65 gallons. Down here is the blue bin. Well, you all know what a blue bin looks like. That's what we have now for recycling. This would be the recycling container if we were to go that route. They're about $350 per month rent. The price hasn't been established because it'll depend somewhat upon how many people, if it's optional, if it's optional, it'll be in how many people because you have to determine the cost. The cost has to be built into the system because the reality is we will have to have code enforcement expanded somewhat because there will be people who will leave these out. 
and I don't think there's a trustee up here, and certainly myself, that will support a program that t these toters will sit out in front of the house or the side of the house. They will have to be in the house, obviously, typically in the garage. We'll come back to that in a moment. Um, we're just talking about recycling and garbage tonight. Yard waste is not part of the discussion. There are places where you can get a toter for yard waste, but it really doesn't make sense since we only really have a four month yard waste season. So that will continue as is where you bundle them, put the yard waste out in bags, so on and so forth. For those of you who've been in Bolingbrook for a number of years, we did have, well, we attempted one year to go to a sticker program for yard waste. It was like declaring war. People hated it. We had to have stickers sold through the hardware stores. They wanted 10% to collect them. So it cost money, it wasn't practical, so we reverted back to the program we have now. I think it was like three or four months that lasted and we changed it back. I'd like to thank BCT for doing the camera work tonight. This will be re-shown. A loyal BCT members in the audience. It will be rebroadcast a number of times over the next several days. We could not do it live from this building. And realistically, we could, I knew there would be more people here tonight than what Village Hall would hold. So we brought it here instead. Um, for openers, for years, Refuse collection, garbage collection has been on the property tax bill. Every spring, sometime about June, I'll meet a whole lot of new friends. Property tax bills hit, and the first person people call is the mayor's office. The school district gets about 68% of your property tax bill. The village is about 10%. But people generally don't look through the line items on their property tax bill, and they call the village. As part of that levy from the village, has been refuse collection. That was started probably back in the early 70s that refuse collection was put on the property tax bill. Back in that day, every house in Bowling Book was about the same value, plus or minus $10,000. $35,000, homes, everybody's home was about the same price. So it was fair and equitable to do that. Today, we have homes, single family homes that range from about 100,000 up to and over $900,000. So with having refuse collection on a tax bill, that means people who are having the more expensive homes are paying two and three, almost four times the refuse what it costs the less expensive homes. Now there might be those people think, well, that's fair. You know, the people who got the big homes, they got a lot of money, they can afford to subsidize it. People generate about the same amount of garbage regardless of the value of the home, we believe. In fact, you could probably make the case some of the more expensive homes generate less because typically you can't afford that kind of home until your kids are grown and you can finally get that home you always wanted. That I can't really speak to, but the reality is, in fairness, we're going to go to a direct billing. Niles and Bolingbrook to our knowledge, are the only two communities that have used the property tax system. And Niles, we know, is looking to go off of it, too, for the same reason, because it's inflated our property tax by something that should be direct billed, and that will start sometime in late spring. It'll be approximately $19 to $20 per month. You'll be billed quarterly. And you're paying the same price right now, but instead of paying it through property taxes, you'll pay direct bill. <clears throat> and if we go with toters, you'll pay the toters on that direct bill also. A Little bit of history about these things to begin with, as best as I've been able to research it. These things started in the city of Chicago, predominantly because of a rat problem. Well, we don't have rats in Bolingbrook. I know some people once a year, twice a year, I'll get a call from somebody, I've got a rat in my yard. I have yet to have proof there's a rat in our yards. We do have possums, and a lot of people mix up a possum for a rat. Now last year, we had a very unusual year, and it looks like this spring may be the same. 
we had a lot of skunks. And some of the communications I received from residents, you would think Bolingbrook was the only place where skunks were in North America. Now, clearly there was lots of newspaper articles. In fact, just a few weeks ago, there was an article, there was a news column, a, a news story on one of the TV stations about Vernon Hills is overrun with skunks. We have tried to trap as many as we can. In fact, we hired a professional trapper for the last three years. He goes by the name of Trapper Joe. And Trapper Joe last year caught approximately 700 skunks. And so we do proactively go after them, and our own staff will also trap skunks. But we've had some early winters, and this one looks like it's going to be, an, or excuse me, early springs. This will be an early spring, too. People immediately jumped on the issue. It happened to be um, a candy issue to grab hold of that the skunks wouldn't be here if we didn't have garbage in bags. Skunks, I'm not going to say a skunk would never eat garbage. I'm not going to say a coyote would never eat garbage. But skunks like grubs in your lawn. In early spring, brings out the grubs, and you've seen lawns around town where skunks have just ravaged it by digging it up. And I tried to tell people if a skunk lived predominantly on our garbage, because we have garbage bags, this is our garbage route. The red is Monday. The green is Tuesday. Wednesday is yellow. That means the skunks would have to be going in droves from one end of town to the other to keep up our garbage day. Now, I'm being a little facetious there, but that's just the reality. That's the garbage routes we have across Bolingbrook. Raccoons are really the bigger problem with garbage. I live next to a wooded area, and I see raccoons all the time. Around my house, my back deck, you can hear them scratching at the window at night. We also trap those. But raccoons, that's, that is a, that is a um, by the way, most of these pictures were sent to me by residents. People said, you've seen this, you've seen that. So I'm using a lot of those today. That is a raccoon in a toter. The next picture shows you, and I've been told by Groot, raccoons are very adept at figuring out how to open things. They're strong, and I'm just telling you, this is not going to be a foolproof suggestion to garbage bags being ripped open. The reality is, and I know it's not convenient for some people because of work schedules, lots of reasons, I think I've heard most of them, if you put your garbage out in the morning of garbage day, the bags will be fine. All the animals that go after these or the bags are nocturnal animals. They're out at night. Now, I realize some people go to work early. Some people work late into the night and get home early and are sleeping. But if you pack these, if you put these, if your garbage bags out in the morning, they won't be bothered. And they might not be bothered as much, but raccoons will get into these too. This program we have in place has been in place, as I said, over 40 years, going back to before anybody in this room was involved in village government. Well, wait, there's one back here. 1975, Judy Bredaway was a village trustee, passed the program we currently use. When people move here from another town, particularly Chicago, or Joliet, or Aurora, or a city that has alleys, where people put toters, they call up and know where their garbage can is. And I get a handful of calls every year. <clears throat> this past year, I got more than usual. It became an issue in the local campaign, and it got stirred up to the point where it's continued from then and not culminating tonight, but it's getting close to culminating. It's not as simple as it sounds of just saying, here's a toter, take it. The question is, and I'll come back to this later, again and again, where do you put them? I have learned through a strong code enforcement department, and most of them are here tonight, it's stunning what some people will allow to be sitting in front of their house. It's stunning. I personally don't want two of these sitting in front of my garage door. 
but I'm going to show you pictures in a little bit because I had a professional photographer drive around our neighboring towns where they have toters and took pictures of many homes to show you <coughs> what clearly I think we would also have if we go to them. The original refuse hauler back in the 70s was the Rots. Seriously, the name of the company was Rots. John Rott was the president. They had our contract for a number of years. In 1988, we rebid it. We bid it, and a company called a and got the contract. It was a nightmare because a and came in and put in new routes, different times, and it was almost a revolution on the fact that the people were used to having their garbage picked up on Tuesday. Now it was Thursday at 10 o'clock. Now it's 2 o'clock. <clears throat> they had the contract about three years. They, we did rebid it and a company called Crown got the contract, and that company over the years has morphed into the company now called Root. I get less than five, and I can't even name five, criticisms of Root and the way they do the refuse pickup. I'm not talking about bags or toters, I'm just talking about what they do and how they clean things up. They do an excellent job. We've been very pleased with them over, well, since 1991. We have not bid it since 1991, but what we do is every year we give them a contract, three to five years. When that contract is coming up, we go out and do a study of all our neighboring communities. And on your chair tonight is a sheet that shows not every community in the neighborhood. There's 270 sub Chicago suburbs. We're not going to put them all in there, but there's probably 12 or 15 of our neighbors. Now, when you look at it, you'll see it's very hard to compare one town to the next. Every town is a little bit different. Many of them subsidize the refuse pickup some way or another. I could go into those specifics, but it's not really critical to this discussion, but you can see from that, from that survey, which, well, you can't read up there, but you all have one, it is, I think, fairly comprehensive. We have what I would call a Cadillac refuse program. We do everything. And if you look at that list, others don't do everything. We pick up refuse, unlimited bags. We pick up recycling, unlimited containers. We pick up yard waste, unlimited. Bulk items, bulk items, a piece of furniture. Free once a week. White goods, unlimited. Now, I would suggest, too, I drive through the neighborhoods a lot, more than people would, it's the point where they probably wonder why I do, but I drive around town a lot, I rarely take the same route when I'm going someplace just to drive through a different neighborhood. When I see washing machines, appliances, refrigerators, dishwashers, and mattresses sitting out on the curb, all you have to do is tell the person you're buying the mattress from to take the old one away. All you have to do is tell the stores delivering your new dishwasher, take the old one away. And you know, you don't have to do that, certainly. But by leaving it, you add to the cost of the overall village's recycle, or refuse program. I'm not telling you you're doing something wrong. I'm just saying, tell, make them take the old one with them. They'll happily do that. Well, I should say happily. In most cases, they will. Anyway, the final cost for Bolingbrook, 1979. And you can see how it compares to other communities. <coughs> so if you've got any questions about that, you can feel free to ask, ask them later. I want to show you some videos. The first video is how do toters work. That is a, that yellow device, by the way, that's manufactured here in Bolingbrook, a company called Perkins, I don't know, just off Remington Boulevard. I've toured their facility and seen the construction. Nice company, we're glad they're in town. When you see that little hook at the bottom center, there's a little, looks like a almost a yellow tongue, that, that thing hooks, hooks on the bar on the front of this toter. That's why you can't get a toter at Lowe's, Home Depot, or Menards, or online. It's got to be one that fits that device. Now, this is another picture showing that device as it picks it up hydraulically. The next one shows you how the system works. Let's see. Okay, this shows the current program we have. That's a group truck 
picking up garbage bags as you all know them. Some of these may be a little tedious, but bear with me. The guy gets out of the truck, grabs a bag, which is typically 10 to 20 pounds each, throws them in, back in the truck, he's on his way. Now the next video will show you the toter system. This is here in Bolingbrook, right? We staged this here in Bolingbrook to show you how it would work. The driver has to get out of the truck, as he did with the bags, has to physically get the toter, position it in place so the hydraulic lift will lift it up, dump it, and then return it to the apron of the driveway. How long does that take? I don't know. I didn't time it. But if you study both of them, you'll see, and the company will tell you, it's slower with a toter than it is with a bag. Now, how much slower, I don't know, but they estimate if we were to go to toters, they would have to add a one truck, and those trucks cost 400000 400000 for a garbage truck. And they would have to add one driver on every route to accommodate toters. Now, is that what people want? Perhaps. Maybe. Maybe that's the way we'll go. But it does cost more because of the trouble of getting out, positioning the toter. And, of course, the same is true with the recycling bin. But the issue, again, is with storage. I showed this next video to a homeowner association group uh, a few months ago. And the first one shows you Bolingbrook on garbage day. You'll see the blue bins and the bags. The next video shows Bolingbrook after the garbage truck has gone by. You'll see blue bins turned upside down. The bags are gone. Presumably, the blue bins go in at night. We know that's not always true. The next video shows garbage day with toters. These are pictures taken in neighboring communities. The next day, sh the next slide or one shows garbage day after the trucks have been through in communities with toters. And this is the key question about storage. The next one shows garbage day, the day after garbage day, showing where the toters are. There's a house with a three-car garage. <clears throat> I, and I don't believe anybody on the village board, wants to see these things sitting in front of houses 365 days a year, 24-7. I don't want to see them on the side of the garage. 365 days a year, 24-7. I don't think your neighbors want to see them in the backyard 365 days a year. And frankly, on a day we get a 12-inch snow, I'm not so sure anybody's going to be interested in dragging a toter from the backyard to the apron of the driveway or in pouring down rain or snow or what have you. In Bolingbrook, we have approximately 24,000 housing units. Some of them have no garage, not many, but some don't have a garage at all. Some have a one-car garage that was 
convert it into living space. We don't allow that today, but back in the 70s, people could do that, and the village would approve it. So they, in effect, got rid of a garage. Some built a garage in their backyard, but some did not. We have many houses with two-car garages. And those houses, I live in one of them. I'm hard-pressed to get my snowblower in the corner. And I'm not sure what I would do with one of these. Now, of course, we have a lot of houses now that are built with a three-car garage. But as you saw in the video, and you'll see more in a minute, people put their toters in front of the third-car garage. Because I found out when people have a parking problem, I've got four cars. I've got no place to park them. I said, don't you have a two-car garage? Well, yeah, but I got my boat and my motorcycle in there. So the reality is garages get used for a lot of things, but we found that not a lot of them get used for toters. They just don't fit. Now, the cost of compliance will be a problem because if, in fact, we have toters as an option, then we will uh, have to have people go around and check for toters that are outside. Now, I'm not sure of this, but I would, I'm thinking that the people leave their blue bins out that we chase all the time will probably be the same people who leave their toters out. Because if they can tolerate a blue bin sitting on their front stoop or inside the bushes by their front door or sitting in front of the garage or who knows where, they probably don't mind seeing a toter sitting there either. I knocked at a door last spring, beautiful home. Woman hit me after a few minutes of conversation, why can't I have a toter? I looked at her and thought, okay, here we go, number 12,442. I said, first of all, I stepped back and said, you know, you have a beautiful home, brand new home. And I stepped back a little further, you've got beautiful landscaping here. Why do you want to have two garbage bins sitting in front of it? You know, we just built a new McDonald's at 53 and Bowton. We didn't. They did. We make our business sector, certainly the current ones, not so much the ones 30, 40 years old, we make them enclose their refuse containers, dumpsters as we call them, inside enclosed cages. That's the McDonald's that was just built. Staff estimate that probably cost them $20,000 because it has to be the same brick and the same trim of the building. And that's true with any restaurant that's built and building today. Because we don't want to see that. We don't want that to be the focal point as you're driving around looking at a garbage dumpster that the lid's propped open, stuff sitting next to it, so on and so forth. So that's why we do that. In Bolingbrook, we have 76,000 residents, 17,500 single-family homes, Approximately 4,000 townhomes, condos, quads, and I don't know how virtually any of those could accommodate these inside their home. I just don't. I mean, I'm, I like the program we got. I think that's pretty clear. At the same time, where do you put these? I mean, I'll show you some more pictures in a minute. We have some senior living housing of about 670, total of 24,400. Back in, what year did we pass that, Matt? Back in 2004, I was frustrated as I drove through town seeing, you know, the little storage sheds behind people's houses? When you buy them at Menards and Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever else, how great they look when they're brand new, spiffy little house. You put your snowblower and your bicycle and whatever else you want to put in there. That's true the first year. Second year, third, fourth. After a few years, that home deteriorates like anything else. And you see them listing to the left, the roof falling in, so on and so forth. And I thought, you know what, all this is a storage problem. So I went to staff, and I said, why don't we build, change our building codes so that garages have to be five feet longer. Increase the length of a garage by five feet. The whole thinking was a place to put, wasn't toters then, then it was just all the yard equipment, their lawnmower, their snowblower, what have you, bicycles. So we did. 1,700 homes have been built that way. There's still 
about 16,000 single family homes that do not have that ability. So as we build new homes today, there is storage in the garage, but not in the older homes. That's just unfortunately a fact of life. And I've got a few more videos and pictures I'm gonna show you. These were all sent to me by residents. Uh, the first one is, well, I'll just show them. I'll comment on this. Is, this was neighboring communities. No, no, that's the last one, isn't it? Well, we can go over that. That's, that's not A. I want A, yeah. These are pictures of toters where there was wind involved. We have a lot of wind problems out in the far west end, River Hills in particular, one of our last subdivision. There's nothing to stop wind coming from the west. Eventually, those trees that are planted and the soil fertile will help break that wind. But when you get high winds, all bets are off. You hear in the news, they tell semi-traders to get off the highways. Well, when heavy winds, anything goes. This is the winds, these are, pic these are actual pictures of wind and how they affect Now, <clears throat> what's the next one? These are, some of these are kind of humorous. This is. <laughs> See how far it goes. <laughs> Robot <laughs> trash can. So I just lost our trash can. <laughs> is it stopping? Nope, nope. Keep going. Keep going. Toter stopped oh. at Toter. <laughs> All right, the next one. A bit redundant, but bear with me. Guys, look at my trash can here. I'm sitting here chasing after my trash there are can. People, these are actual videos people took, and there's commentary, which is not important, but you can see where oh this my goes. Gosh. This is for sure the end of the world. Look at this one. How the hell do we get these? Look at my trash can. It's that leaving. It actually goes around the where corner. Where the hell it's going? All right. Okay. Next one. The freaking cameras. The garbage cans are rolling down the street. The trash cans are rolling down the street. <laughs> you gotta freaking love this. Can you cut the next one? <laughs> this one, I mean, it, some of the commentary was kind of interesting. This is this I said was said to me last Friday. These pictures were taken in Naperville last fall. These are on a windy day. You can see they've been tipped over. Garbage is still in a couple of them. Can 
and you see the litter and debris blowing around. And I, I obviously don't put that out there to show you Naperville, just the reality of what happens on windy days. Things blow on windy days. Now we got some pictures and I'll be wrapping it up and we can go to your comments and questions. I'm looking for the pictures we took Friday. These were taken Friday in a number of our neighboring communities, Romanville, Naperville, Downers Grove, Lyle. This was not garbage day. This was the day between garbage pickups. Three-car garage. That's it on the PowerPoint, I guess that's what you call it. Now, I want to ask some of you, this is a serious issue. Look at it objectively. If you don't like me, don't blame the bag program on me. If you don't like toters or you don't get toters, don't blame it. This is a serious decision. It's not as simple as people tried to propose it to you in the past. It's a cost decision. The reason the bag program was started back in the 70s, as I'm told, and Judy was on the board at the time, lifting garbage cans, because they hadn't invented toters in, was difficult and hard for drivers to pick up. And they had a lot of workers' comp claims and so forth. Because people will fill a garbage can, I've done it in earlier years, you'll fill it up until it's filled. All you have to do is drag it down the driveway to the apron. Somebody else comes along, has to physically pick it up and dump it. So we, at the time, as I'm told, went through bags. You don't put any more in that bag than you can carry. Because one, if you can't carry it, it's pointless. If you put too much in it, that bag tears, you have a mess to clean up somewhere between your kitchen and the apron of your driveway. As you saw from the video, the bags... Most of them, the drivers grab one or two, boom, throw them like nothing because they don't weigh much. They're quick, efficient, they're gone, and after they leave, there's nothing left six days a week. The toters are fine. That takes care of the physical problem of having to wrestle it in there. The hydraulic container dumps them in. No more picking it up, and you can roll it. But that video is showing that young child pushing that toter is not all that different. I knocked on a door at a multi-family townhome association last spring. The woman said, Mayor, how come we can't have toters? I looked at her and said, well, two things. One, you want to put your car in a garage or a toter? They both won't fit. She stood there and stared at me. Hmm. Never thought about that. And I said, secondly, you're only about four inches taller than this toter. This is not easy to wield around. So it's physically, it's not as simplistic as it looks either. Yeah, it's got two wheels, but you're not going to see this thing in a race because it's two wheels that turn, roll. That's about the extent of it. They're, they're just garbage cans with wheels. I talked to a homeowner association person today that unequivocally, she does not want those in her association. So that brings the question up, hmm, 
Rick, do you have a three-car garage? Anybody have a three-car garage? No. Ken's got a three-car garage. Would you put these in your garage? Oh, yeah, you would have to, wouldn't you? <laughs> director of Public Safety, Ken Teppel. I was Rosa Luna, Director of Finance. And we met Lucas. So, optionally, he could have one. You live in XYZ townhome. It's all right. You got no place to put it. Oh, what am I, a second class citizen? No, it's just you have to keep it inside. You can't fit one of those in your garage without, let alone two. Well, I'll leave my car out. Yeah, you might. You might. That's possible. But it creates an enforcement problem. We can staff up for it. We have, I believe, six code enforcement officers now. We could hire two or three more. But that cost will be added to the cost of refuse collection. I mean, if, this, if every house in town had a three-car garage built with the standards we passed uh, a couple of years ago, longer, I wouldn't care. Yeah, it'd still be an enforcement problem. But at least then people have a place to put it. I mean, you know, really, I'd be, I'm serious. Where do you put them? All right, I've talked long enough. I'm sure too long, according to some of you. And of course, this will be all over Facebook pages tomorrow. I can't wait to see how this is reported. I can probably write down the names of most of the people who will be posting. I'm a big boy, I'm used to it. So, I guess at this point, people have a question or a comment. I'd like to avoid, you have to go to the mic because it's being recorded, so if you don't mind. You have to go to this microphone here, and I'd like to get your name in it for the minute. We have to have this for the minutes. Who's commenting? So who's got the clipboard that's going to be writing down names? Well, we'd like to have a contact, so if you've got a question, we can get back to you. Yes, sir. Hmm? Yep, let's talk right into it. I'm Stephen Bruma, and I live on Lakewood, and I patiently listen to everything you've you said. you talk into the microphone, sir. I've patiently listened to everything that you've said, and I've watched the videos, so I'm going to give you a little backstory. My wife and I moved to Bolingbrook seven years ago. Didn't know a lot about the community, except that we were charged $600 to move into the community as part of our closing. We bought all new things for our home. We bought a garbage can, similar to that one on wheels. And we put it out the first week of garbage collection. Unbeknownst to us, we weren't supposed to do that because the garbage man took that brand new can that we spent our money on and crushed it and took it as garbage. Since that time, and I emailed the village to find out about this meeting tonight because this is the first time I've been here, we have possums. To your point, we have skunks. We have possums the size of small dogs. We have raccoons. I have red foxes. I have coyotes. I have hawks as big as a small child on my deck. I prompt this, sir, and I, I blame this all on the fact that we have garbage outside because we've created a feeding source for these animals who, to your point, are nocturnal. So what have we done? We've done all the things you said. I put my garbage out at 7 a.m. on Monday morning. Now for a while, group didn't come around until two o'clock in the afternoon, and they were coming very early in the beginning. They'd be there 7.15 if your garbage wasn't out, you missed it. Got switched to two, didn't ask questions why, but then you put your garbage out early in the morning, it sits there all day. So you have, we've had dogs, we've got feral cats. It's wild kingdom in our yard. And I have a surveillance system. So I've called a village. I've called code enforcement, I've called the village hall, I've talked to people. 
I would want one of those in my yard because it's a cultural thing is what you're speaking to. And I understand you're showing the videos, but in my neighborhood, my neighbors pick their garbage up. They pick their totes up. I have one house in my community that I can tell you every week, their totes sit out there all day. And it's because they work. So I don't blame them for them, but you're talking about culture and the way people think and the way they behave. I don't care what my neighbor does. I care about my 40 acres in a mule and the animals running through my property because there's garbage out. And I put my garbage out every morning and you can send your offices around every day. I don't understand why this village will not just simply invest, put those things on people's properties and allow them to do it. I can fit them in my garage. I have a two car garage and two vehicles and I get my snow blower, my garbage can in there that we keep that I empty out by hand every morning and carry it out to the curb. I don't understand the confusion and the thoughts of not being able to do this. It's simple common sense. It takes away food sources from animals and regardless of how it looks, if those are the houses that you're showing in your tape that people have garbage cans around their houses, then that is a job for code enforcement. I'd be all behind you going around and start writing tickets. But for those people who have the right frame of mind and they're keeping their properties up to date and they're moving their garbage cans after it gets picked up, how is that not a benefit? What, what, what is, and that is my question. What is your, what is your street? I'm down, I'm down. Sir? Yeah. What is your street? I just wanted to thank you to have an open forum. So to you and the village for doing this, because I don't think I remember this for anything else. So thank you. Um, I'm Joanne Rodriguez. I live in Barclay Estates. Most of us have three car garages. Some have two. Everybody keeps their trash inside. We have to, we have a homeowners association. Everybody keeps their trash inside in one of those. And then they take the trash bags out to the curb in the morning. So. This is a behavior change thing. I don't think it's something that the village can change systematically. It's gonna come at the cost of the wallet for people who don't wanna follow through on that. My biggest concern is the recycling program and having recycling bins out there without a cover that ultimately make it litter. So it really bothers me because we live in a naturalized area. One of the reasons why people come to Bolingbrook and stay in Bolingbrook and find it as an attraction are naturalized areas. We have three lead platinum buildings. These are all economic drivers that we don't really tout enough, but it's hard to do that when you live across from a federally protected wetland area that have plastic bottles and plastic wrappers, and pieces of paper. And when I drove up um, over uh, through the, areas with trash out tonight with the recycling bins. There was stuff blowing everywhere. If you go up Indian Boundary Street, there's plastic hanging from the branches. So I just wanna say this has an impact of about 7% off of our property values, according to Keep America Beautiful. I'm sure you're familiar with them. They ran nationwide trash campaigns. 7% is what it affects our property values to see litter. So it's not a littering thing. That's again, human behavior. This is litter. This is stuff blowing out of those uncovered totes and everywhere. And if it's out during the day, it's everywhere. So my ask is, I'd love to have the containers, but if we aren't getting that, then we need to stop the recycling program. And that's what I do for a living. So it kills me to say that, but I don't want to pick up everybody's trash anymore. So can you just think about that? Okay. My name is Stan Kriz and I have a unique situation. I'm a resident of Bolingbrook for 22 years and I own a lake home where we do use toters. And um, basically I was on a committee to analyze and look at the problems that are, arise. And uh, one of the biggest problems they have, it's an older community, seniors can't take those out. They just can't manage the weight and uh, the, uh, you know, sometimes their neighbor helping and everything. And the same problem is uh, with handicapped. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Okay, yeah. Uh, the college kids seem to like them because they're good for keg parties, so they end up stolen. Whose cost is it? And for replacements and stuff. Winter time, the snow trucks just plow them over and they're damaged. 
who has to replace it, the homeowner or the village. So there, uh, those are the major issues. And of course, from a personal standpoint, you gotta clean them out every now and then because they really do stink. And that is an attractant to the animals. The scenario I have possibly see, can you split the deliveries between the people that want to tote and the people that don't want to tote? You also have a capacity issue because those can only hold three or four bags. And you'll see people in our other area, they'll have the toter out there and they'll have five, six other bags anyway. So they're using the bags and the toters. So there's an additional cost going both ways. So that's from an experience uh, from another area. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. If, you, if we do this, and you have one toter, it's 95 gallons, if it fills up, you can put bags next to it. It does, interestingly enough, create the same thing we have now, but you can do that. And by the way, the comment was made about the animals. All those animals were mentioned were here first. We displaced them. And I feel badly that all these animals bother us, but I don't know. I, I can't control that. As far as the pickup time, somebody's got, it's like snow plowing. I get calls every winter. My house is, my street's the last street shoveled, plowed in Bolingbrook. And I want to say, well, how do you know? You have a drone? The reality is, on garbage day, somebody has to be picked up first, no sooner than 8 o'clock, and somebody has to be last on that day. Uh, we have made modifications on occasion because of the wind situation out west. We moved the pickup time earlier. And by the way, I guess there was a mistake this morning, and the truck, truck was early at uh, River Hills. That's been corrected. But somebody's got to be first, and somebody's got to be last on garbage day. That's just the way the system's set up. Yes. Hi, my name's Kara Jorgensen. I have a couple of questions. I'll try to go quickly, though. Um, you said that we would be doing direct billing. Is that regardless of the toter situation? Yes. And I think you said approximately, what, like $19 a quarter well, 19, or a month? Well, $20, say. OK. I just wanted to, a month? A month. A month. Build quarterly, right. I, said, I, I heard both of those words. That's why I wanted to clarify that. Um, I have a couple of questions for the, the group people. I don't know if you're going to know. What's but, the question? Well, for example, you know, we talked a little bit about workers' compensation claims and that being an issue with some garbage collection in the past when they had to pick up the garbage cans. Is there more of an incidence of, of workers' compensation claims in Bolingbrook because they're throwing bags versus towns that have toters? It, that's a good question. I mean, uh, with the automation, um, with the garbage collection industry these days, we've seen injuries go down, but I think everyone knows workers' comp claims, the costs have skyrocketed, right? So it's, it's a hard number to pinpoint. Yes, we may have less injuries with automation, but the few injuries we do get cost five times more than they did 15, 10, 15 years ago. So there's pluses and minuses to it. It's, it's a fine line we walk because it would be additional trucks out here, which you got $800,000 in trucks with two trucks, union drivers, benefits, which is all good, but it comes at the same price. So, In short, he doesn't know. <laughs> okay, but hypothetically I, well, seriously, speaking... Well, seriously, stop, stop and ask what question. I will ask him to check and see employees that work the Bolingbrook routes if their workers' comp claims in Bolingbrook are higher than other communities that have toters. But I would, I would have been stunned if he knew that answer off the top of his head. How many communities do you have? How many communities does group service? But it's not a difficult answer to find out. Well, I just said I'll, right. I'll have him figure yeah, it out. That's okay. Make I'll sure wait. make sure you leave your I left everyone. my email address. Okay. Yeah. Um, it would be more expensive for group to collect toters in this town, is that correct? Because they'd have to get more trucks and you'd have to have more employees. So it's an increased cost, which would then get carried over into us. So if it's $19 right now, hypothetically, in a year or two, or whenever the contract is renegotiated, it could go 20, 25, or whatever the case may be, right? Well. Because that pa that'll get passed <coughs> on to us, I assume. If you look at the sheet of all the area communities, where 
kind of middle of the pack, actually a little toward the lower end of it, and we provide more than some of those neighbors. But that is negotiated. If gas prices skyrocket, there's a provision in the contract that we work that out because we, can't, we don't want to lose money. That makes no sense for either one of us. So we renegotiate it. As I said earlier, if we do go with an optional total program and 200 people take them, that's one cost of, of uh, compliance as well as uh, charges. If, we, if 2,000 want them, that's something else. We don't know. That's an okay. unknown. But it, it, prices are going up. Nothing's going down that I'm aware of. Right. So hypothetically, if we were to start using toters or have that as an option, a code change would happen? You guys would institute an ordinance that would say people couldn't have these things out in front of their houses? A very tight one. You'll have to sign a statement. You'll keep it inside, and you'll sign a statement. First violation is one offense. Second, third violation, we pick up the toter. So that would be like... When I pick up my toter and I pay my fee for it, it would say I would sign the agreement at right. that time. Okay. How do other towns handle that? Do they do this? Like Naperville, for example, which changed pretty recently, I think. I honestly don't know. It's not a real concern how they handle it. As I said, you drive through neighboring towns, you see them sitting out front. We don't want that. So they don't, Naperville doesn't care about the toter? You'd have to ask them. I mean, well, the reason why I'm asking is because. I, Naperville is a relatively desirable place for people to live, and I would wonder if less people have decided to move there since they got toters. Well, because the argument is that having this thing in front of your house would decrease your property value because it's ugly, which makes sense. I and didn't, I I didn't that. say that, but you're welcome to interject it. But if that's the case, if the issue is that it's going to take away from the beauty of our town, which I can respect that argument, my question is, why doesn't why don't these other towns care about that? You'll have to ask them. Did they, I know, I know did my, they? I know my accountant lives in Downers Grove. He lives in a homeowner association which prohibits him. He said most people violate it. The association is frustrated on what to do about it. I know that many of the homes you're talking about in Maplesville, and I haven't driven every street in town, nor am I planning to. But there's a lot of much larger homes, particularly in the south and eastern part of the area, which typically have or often have three-car garages. We don't have that number of homes as I went through it. But if you want to know what quite Aprilville tolerates it, or Romeville, or uh, Downers Grove, or Lyle, you have to call up, go door to door. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Okay. You have to go to the. So, excuse me. I, I, we cannot have people yelling out questions, please. It's being videotaped, and it's not fair to the people that couldn't be here tonight that want to watch it. That's all I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you. Hi. I've uh, been here 47 years, which is kind of hard to believe, but I've been through every one of the garbage companies. I want to compliment Groot. They do the best job as of today. However, we have open recycle bins. In my mind and the mind of a lot of sane people, that is an insane situation. As far as chasing garbage cans down in gale force winds, do you know how light the blue bins are? We have numbered our bins so that when they're blowing all over our neighborhood, we return them to the proper people. Second thing, code enforcement. Enforce the existing garbage regulations. There are people who put their garbage out on Saturday night when they're being picked up on Thursday. Ticket these people. When you set a program to attempt to make it, you can have it. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it. Increases the cost all the way around and it becomes chaotic. It would be a management nightmare to keep track of who, who has a garbage permit, who doesn't have a garbage permit. The biggest problem is I get my exercise Tuesday afternoons picking up everybody else's garbage. Obviously, I need more exercise, but I'm tired of it. There, if you do nothing else, if you don't go with the toters, figure out a way not 
to have open recycle bins. That's an insane idea. That's no, it. I, Thank you. You, 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 make, you make an excellent point, and they do make those bins with lids, but if you put a lid on it, you greatly reduce your capacity. And, uh, you know, this is a recycling toter. But when it's empty, it will blow too. Now, not as far, perhaps, not as much as a blue bin. And I have a blue, I put out ref, or recycling every week, and I'm not a perfect compactor, but I stuff the bin and I make sure. The biggest complaints come the first two weeks of January after Christmas when people take the wrapping paper and stuff it in their blue bin and don't compact it, and that stuff just whips out of there like tissue paper, which is many times it is. But a very good point about the compactor, and, and that's why they're here tonight hear that so point well made yes yes um, my name is Larry Fox um, I'm here as a citizen also I'm president of our townhome association speaking totally as the president of the townhome association there is no way we could use either one of those um, I have a one-car garage I have a garbage can in there we put our bags in take them out we could have one, we'd be moving the cars up and back just to get it in and out. If we had two, we'd have to park one car on the driveway, one car on the street. Um, I was talking to our, our management person today. She has the blue bin. It's twice as high with a lid. And that would be fantastic because we have two bins right now. I th to me, that would solve the problem. Good point. I don't know they made out of it. Thank you. Hi. Thank you, Mayor, for the forum. Uh, my name is Ryan. I live in Brookwood Estates. Uh, so I live next to a retention pond. And every windy garbage day, I have to go pull stuff out of the pond, stuff from recycling bins that have been blowing around. Um, so if toters aren't the answer, and I can understand all of the arguments against them, um, I would love to see an answer for open recycling bins. Obviously, we can't put recycling in bags, but we need something because we're neighbors to the Windy City, so we get plenty of the wind. Thank you. Thank you. Um, kind of a, uh, about the cleanup and ordinance, and I know I get complaints about ordinance not doing their job. Probably 95% of the time when I call downstairs about an address where there's a complaint, resident calls up and said, my neighbor, blah, blah, blah. I call downstairs, 95% of the time, there's an open file, meaning we're on it. But the judicial system in this country is very lenient. You just can't go in there and say, here, boom, you gotta, boom, you gotta go through due diligence, you have to go through the court system, there's times they get continuances, they don't show up, and of course, last but not least, if they get fined, they don't pay it. And we know we can't arrest somebody not paying a fine and put them in jail for not paying a, a $50 ticket for not mowing their lawn or trash. So it just gets complicated. I'm not saying that's, that's not an excuse, it's just a fact of life. I wish we could. I'm as frustrated with some homeowners as, as many of you are. And as I said earlier, I'm stunned on how so, some people will tolerate in their front yard or let it happen in their house. And garbage blowing around is certainly one of them. The reason, one of the reasons Chicago got rid of plastic bags or trying to get rid of them is because they do blow around. You can ask this guy right up here how many times I call Village Hall and say there's a plastic bag in a tree on a parkway somewhere. Did that tree come from that house by the parkway tree? Maybe. It might have come from Tony's. It might have come from who knows. Those bags get caught up in the wind. So we do monitor that. And code, the code staff is here at night. They hear you too. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is uh, Sergeant Corey Porter. I'm a fairly new resident and also a disabled veteran. Um, it seems like most of this meeting is about aesthetics. We can't get around cost. I mean, if you want toters, you're gonna have to pay for them, but aesthetics seems to be the biggest issue. We don't want the toters left in front of the houses. We don't want them left out. Um, unfortunately, the videos and pictures you saw were extremely biased. I have pictures here of my property after one garbage day with garbage scattered throughout my entire property. I left it here for a month to see how long it would take for the city or maybe somebody who didn't like the aesthetics of it to pick it up. Nobody. I had to pick this up myself.
And I know I might not look disabled, but it's difficult for me. So if it's aesthetics we're worrying about, this is much worse than toters. Yes. My name is Jackie Randall, and I live in Winston Village. I live in a townhome with one garage. I have a car in my garage right now that doesn't go in the wintertime. It's a Mazda, it sits very low to the ground, so therefore it is garage kept during my winter. I cannot fit those in my garage. I don't recycle on a, on a weekly basis because I don't have enough recycling. I tried and it, I end up washing the pop cans out or rinsing the beer cans out because they end up stinking before I can fill a recycling bin up. But do I pick up other people's garbage? Most definitely. Tie your bags up, spray your bags with ammonia, I promise you, they're gonna stay away. They don't come near my garbage at all. If I don't spray it, I can go out there the next day and I work nights. As soon as I wake up, I can go outside and pick up the trash from the skunk or the possum or the raccoon or the coyote or whatever it did. Because I see the coyotes running down Monroe like it's, a, it's their freeway. What am I going to do? If you don't spray it, that's what you're going to do. You're going to suffer it. Here you go, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Rose King. I'm a longtime resident of Winston Village. I'm also a board president for a long time at Winston Village. Um, most of the homes in Winston Village are one-car garages. We have 672 homes. The majority are one-car garages. That poses a serious problem for the people with one-car garages because if you want, we also have a serious parking issue there in the visitors' parking lots. So if we're putting garbage cans in the garages, then one of our cars, if you have a husband and a wife, would go in the driveway, and then one would have to go in the visitor's lot. Therefore, when we have visitors, they have nowhere to park. Causes another problem. I live on a street that's a cul-de-sac, no parking on the streets. So this, this isn't going to just be an issue about garbage. This is going to be an issue about space, about parking, about people getting violations for parking on the streets where they're not supposed to. In addition, when people are parked on streets where there is no parking, those streets allow children to hide behind the cars and come running out from behind the cars because they're not supposed to be parked there. So I think this is a bigger issue than just the garbage. However, I like the fact that the, the garbage cans would, would have lids, but after what the mayor took the time to show us today about all of the problems that could happen with these, I think we need to really rethink this. So again, like I said, I think that, and I brought several of the board members with me from Winston Village. Could you please stand up? That's the vice president, and those are two board members from Winston Village. And none of us feel that that's a good idea. We think we should stick with what we have. However, we do agree on the recycling issue because I, too, go all over the association, so does my husband, picking up garbage as a result of it blowing away. So that needs to be addressed in some way. Thank you. My name is Evelyn Carrillo and I live in the River Hill subdivision. And as you know over there, it's pretty windy. And as this morning, which I do every single Monday after I pick up my um, recycle bin, there's still garbage left in it. It is not sticky. It is Um, so I, you know, I don't understand what grout does. I've watched them. Um, I've actually come out and yelled at the garbage people as I've stood out there with my three and four recycle bins, um, which for the fact, um, I cannot carry out myself at all. No matter how little I put in, I do have a handicap, even though I don't look like it. I have to get somebody from a neighboring town who's a friend of mine to take my garbage out every Sunday night. I cannot put it out in the morning on Monday because that person is going to work. So that's really hard. I have a daughter that lives in Lombard that has those bins. 
I'm at her house every Tuesday. I am rolling them out just like nothing and putting them back in after the garbage. I have yet to see one of them blown over in her neighborhood. I, those videos are biased. Obviously, they have a water problem on the street for some of those, which we don't hopefully have here in Bolingbrook. But um, I've never seen those blown over. I also have a friend that lives in Naperville. I have taken hers in and out for her. No problem at all. She has a very small two-car garage that she fits basically one car in, and the other one is right up against it. And those garbage cans fit in the back of her garage, right up against the wall perfectly. No problem whatsoever. She doesn't have to scoot around them or anything else. So I know that you're against this, Mayor Claire, but you know, for people that are handicapped like us, trying to get our garbage cans out and looking at our neighbors that leave those bins out, which I have ended up picking up, putting on their drive, you know, further up their driveway, hoping they'll pick them up, I'm tired of it. Yesterday, I picked up four and five bags out of my front door area, which is in between two big areas. My front door is recessed in that blows up. I open my door, there's garbage bags everywhere. And again, like I said today, I picked up all the garbage that grew out left on my, in my garbage recycled bin again. I'm getting tired of that. That's all I have to say. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Edwin. Uh, you have to excuse me, I'm not the best public speaker, so I may get a little nervous. Just some food for thought. If the toters are a constraint for people with uh, small garages, why wouldn't Groot offer a 35 gallon option that does exist instead of the big containers? Like that one there. There's a 35 gallon option. The company says it's top heavy. Once it's empty, they will blow, just like the blue bin. It's an option, but the company doesn't like it because it's very difficult to manage because of its small. It only holds the equivalent of two of those. They said, if you're going to go to a bin, you need to go to this big one because they'll fill it up. And uh, another point is, if we're moving to a greener uh, world, why wouldn't we have the option to have a bigger recycle can and a you can. smaller trash that, that, can? It's all optional. Mix or match? Okay. And then but, the final... So, but seriously, it's all optional. But in order to have 24,000 homes, folks, you've got to have some standard. You can't have uh, a menu like you see at, uh, at uh, a restaurant. You got to narrow it down for efficiencies and cost. Does that make any sense? I mean, we, I understand what you're saying. You could have four of these if you want it, but you know, those people don't. You, you try and gear it toward what the average home will want. Are there exceptions for people that are disabled? Are there exceptions for people that are elderly? You can make all the exceptions. Those guys do that now with some people. So there's no attempt not to, to avoid that. It's just, it's an option. And then the final point I have, they were saying that um, it would, you would have to add another $400,000 truck to the routing, correct? To be, able to, to be able to accommodate all the customers. Why wouldn't they then just retrofit the current trucks to use a claw system instead of the, the tipper device that they currently use? I think it's probably a couple thousand dollars to retrofit a truck instead of using the that yellow bar. The point they made with that video on the hydraulic system it picks up and dumps is that if you were to go to all toters, every truck would be retrofitted. No, that's not that expensive, but it's slower to do that. So it would take an extra truck and an extra person on the route to accomplish the same number of pickups they pick up now on a route. But that's, a, that's the exact point I was trying to make. The village that I work at uses a claw system that comes, grabs it, tips it, and drops it in three seconds. They're done, and they're on to the next home. True. But again, if we made it optional across town, then you have to have every truck equipped accordingly. But wouldn't that still be cheaper than buying a whole new truck? In any case, that was my point. That's all I have. Thank you. Okay. I'm <laughs> Good job. My name is Genevieve Mazio. I've been a resident for about three years now. I've lived in California and Nebraska, so a very liberal state and a very conservative state. And I'd say Bolingbrook is kind of in the middle. They both have total programs. They've worked very successfully. 
Um, I think to the point that has been made a couple times, I would love to understand the citations and the sources for all of the evidence. I didn't understand that. What? The sources for the videos and things that were shared today. They were sent to me by people. I understand that they may have been sent to you, but are they happening in our community? Because we've got residents here, and I have resident, I have images as well of my community on I've trash seen those. day. As I said a moment ago, some people will tolerate anything in their front yard. Some people drop messes. Go to McDonald's and watch the trash blow around. People get their cheeseburger and throw the wrapper on the ground. That's the society we live in. I just don't want to complicate it by creating more of that. And I, I really don't like the hands sitting outside the houses. I'm sorry. That's just a personal opinion. Everybody here's got a personal opinion. I'm entitled to one too. Absolutely. And it's up to the six trustees. It's never been voted on by the board before because it's not been an issue. <clears throat> but yes, garbage is a problem everywhere. And yes, that is disgusting. But they're not all that way. I put those up there blowing down the street to show what can happen. And frankly, I thought it was a little humorous. I'm sorry if it was offensive to people. But those are not real. offensive, just not realistic make those to up. our situation. Hmm? I said it's not offensive. I just don't think it's realistic to our situation. Well, our situation have, doesn't happen, so we know what we have now. Okay, I have um, one other comment and then a question. Um, the comment is you've said a couple of times um, this isn't what's good for Groot, or it's not good for Groot, or it's it's making their lives more difficult. But I believe that we are residents of the village and it's what's important to the village it's not what's important to them it's what's important to the residents of the village and what we want if it oh, makes i know that's why we're having this meeting I hope that we have the opportunity to have our voices heard again and again and get answers to these questions publicly so that the entire village. I've discussed this and said this at public meetings in the past. This isn't the first time this has been discussed publicly. You know, we set this room up for 270 people. We had no idea we have a thousand or 50. We've probably had tonight how many people? 145 people out of 72,000 some odd number of residents. Now, obviously there are those people who have conflicts. There are those people who didn't hear about it. There's those people who didn't look at the web page. And there's probably a handful of people who don't look at Facebook. So the reality is some people didn't know this meeting we held. So do I think this has represented the whole community? No. Do I think your points aren't very valid? Yes. That's why all these folks are here tonight to listen to your concerns but it is not a simple solution. And I'm gonna say one more time, I do not wanna see these things sitting in front of every garage. That is real. Okay, I've as, seen it. as is this. So my question um, to you is we've talked about an additional $240 being billed directly to residents. It's not additional, you're paying it now through property taxes. It's gonna be direct billed instead of through property taxes. So it's going to be coming off our tax bills, is that correct? We've been subsidizing it. Some of it's coming off, but we've so been that subsidizing. line will be removed. You've never from our paid the true cost. It's been through property taxes. Will that line be removed from our tax bills? Hmm? Will that line be removed from our tax bills then? Will that line what? Be removed. Well, it's not on there now. But you're saying that it, we are paying it now. Garbage is not a line item. It's property taxes. So will the two hundred and forty dollars that we are paying in property taxes to the village? Will our property taxes be reduced by $240? Not this year. When? Is there a plan for that? Well, that's up for budget workshops coming up in a couple of weeks. Okay. Hello, my name is Julie Love. And me and my husband have been a resident for eight, nine years. And this is my daughter, Emma. She's been a resident here for her whole seven years and she has something to say. The animals were here first, and we could at least help them by having recycle bins with lids. That way, the recycle doesn't hurt the animals. And the, the animals were really... Say it again, honey, louder. The animals were here first, and we can help them by having recycle bins with lids. Hi, 
Hi. My question is for those people who said that they can't have the cans because they don't have space in the garage. Where do you put your garbage now before your garbage day? If you don't have a can in your garage, like most people that I know myself, I have a can, two cans in my garage that I wheel out to the front, and I take the garbage out and dump it into the yard. So if you already have a can that you're just dumping into the yard, what's the difference from having a can and putting it onto the street rather than putting, reaching into the garbage and pulling it out to the street? I can't speak to everybody, but I have a garbage can in my garage too. I do just what you do, although I don't take it out of the garage, but this would not fit in my garage. It's right, a but so, uh, a few people ago, you said that there would be an option for a smaller one. Say you would have two of the smaller size one, more like something you already have then. Well, I don't know if you looked at these. They're smaller, but not by much. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm not trying to like, I'm just saying, you're saying you can't have options, but so long as it has that no, I never said piece, that. right? I never said we couldn't have options. A few this minutes is a, ago. This is all about hearing. I, not that you can't have options, but you said you don't want to have a menu. We can't have, um, we have to kind of make it, yeah, standardized, thank you. Um, so, so long as it has the thing that the hook can hook onto, couldn't we find some sort of middle ground where everyone would find a way, something smaller? So if people needed more, I'd gladly put buy a second one to have two in my garage. If somebody had a small garage, they could just have one and be able to fit it in a small corner. I'm sure that you, I highly doubt people have garbage just laying on your like garage floor right now. Do you know what I mean? No, I'd agree. Probably in a garbage bag. So you have bags stacked in your garage. I'm sorry? I mean, th that's yeah. not average, though. I would say that's not most people don't use half a bag of garbage. All right. Okay. You got more? No, that's all I'm saying. I'm just saying if we, if, I think it, we could find a middle ground somewhere here. Right. Oh, trust me. If I could find, I would love a middle ground. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mandy Porter. Oh, that's loud. Um, so I moved here about two years ago, and I was in complete awe, mind blown, that we throw our garbage out at the curb. We came from a place with toters. I've grown up with toters. My son, who's sitting over there, who's 10 years old, he was seven, five, seven years old, pushing a toter just fine. So um, I had sent the mayor an email when I first moved here because I was so upset at the fact that we did not have an option to even just buy our own garbage cans. I didn't need for everyone else to have them. I just wanted the option to have them myself. And it's really funny because I saved that email and I was worried because I left my phone in the car and it's got the email on there. But I didn't need to bring it with because you said exactly everything the way you said it tonight. Like it was programmed, like it was this automated email that you just send out to people when they complain about the garbage. Everything that we saw tonight, that is not, that's not how it is with toters, just so you know. Um, we also came from a place where, this is my question, is Groot our only option for garbage pickup? At this point in time, we have a contract, a master contract with Groot to handle all the refuse, residential housing in Bolingbrook. Okay. Hmm? 2022, 21. Okay, because this is nothing, nothing against Groot, but you're talking about having to fit your trucks with certain handles, and I mean, I don't know. I feel like I'm in outer space living here. I know that's. <laughs> that some of you guys don't understand it because this is what you've done your whole life. And like you said, it's been a great system for the last 40 years. 40. Yeah, you said 40 years. I remember, I have the email. 
I heard you again tonight. Um, this system. This system has been in place for the last 40 years. Um, when I drive through Midway, I can, re I can recite everything you just said and, and everything in the email. So I, I think people need to open their minds a little bit about these toters. Yeah, they're going to cost us a little bit of money. Um, the reason I asked about if we had another option for garbage was because where we came from, we paid $74 every two months for sewage, garbage, pickup, and water, okay? So I'm not even going to get on the topic of water right now because that's out of control. But as much as you want to charge us for gar char charge away, but I just want everybody to know, like, what you saw tonight, my husband already brought up pictures, what our yard looks like. It's terrible, you guys. This is terrible, and we need to update ourselves to, like, the 20th century, right? Thank you. You mentioned Thank Midway. You. I go to Midway frequently, and I go to the cell phone lot. And as you turn into the cell phone lot, if you look to your left, down the alley, it looks like a toter convention. I mean, there's every house, but they got an alley. We don't have alleys. I'm glad we don't, but that would be part of the, solve part of the problem. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Um, my name is Felix Ramos. I've been a resident of Bolingbrook now for 19 years. Um, what I do within the curlage of my property should be my choice. Okay, so I understand that you don't want, you don't want those in front of our house. Hold on, please. I understand you don't want those in front of your house. I don't want them in front of my house either. I'm for and against it. But I should have the option whether I want that big ugly thing or that, that smaller one. Right? I'm paying the, the, the quarterly fee or fine, whatever it is you want to call it. Right? That fits in my garage a lot better than that does. But in my backyard, if my backyard is as prestige as it, as it is, and I want to put that against my fence in my backyard, I should have the right because it's my property. I pay these taxes that you're doing everything it is that you want with it. Okay? You... And the village board should allow us to do what we want within our, within our curlage of our home. I don't know if you guys know, the minute you put your trash on the curb, it is free for anyone to go through. Whatever you have in there that is private isn't private. You have given anyone the privilege to go through your trash at any moment. Okay? Now, if it's in your yard, they cannot go inside your yard to go through your trash. No, ma'am, at that particular moment, you take it out to the curb that morning or that evening. But if you put it, I've got a, I've got a kid, I've got a teenage, 15-year-old kid who puts out his trash right now like this. I've spoken to his dad three or four times, and I will continue to do that because we have to police ourselves as well and our neighbors. Okay. That's all I want to say, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm Joe Coy, lived in Bolingbrook for 30 years, uh, old section, new section. I have a son who lives on, uh, by the golf course on Washington. Bicker garage, totes would work great. I used to live on Falcon Ridge Way, two car garage. If I had two cars in there, I could not get that bin between the cars and the post to get it out of the garage. I now live on Bluestem, New York Design 95, 16 foot door, two full cars, you can't get the bin out. You gotta pull the car out. So there's some big negatives with older houses with bins. Now the city code says that waste should be uh, on your property line, property. Is that defined as a dwelling within the house or within your property lines? That's a question. I don't know if I totally follow that okay. last part. And the reason I, I did is my neighbor has been cited and fined $500 for having garbage too early. Went to the hearing. And the first thing I heard from the city, uh, we'll call it prosecutor, was refuse cannot be out at any time. Later on, from the administrative hearing, I heard Let's not quibble between the distinction between garbage and rubbish. Because the prosecutor said rubbish cannot be at any time. The next statement, now this is, not, this is in sequence, was from the administrative judge. I do not care what the law says. Strike three, in effect. You're you know, guilty. You know what that, 
This judge. is within three weeks ago, within the village. You know who the judge's name was? No, I don't, but I can give you the reference in photographs. Get and that judge's name, would you? We do have a very good system. I love your, your presentation. It reminds you of the Cornfield Regatta. I wonder if those would work. I'm that old to remember that. Uh, the waste management company does a great job, highly efficient. If you did a T&M, it was about half the time. The system works pretty good the, in general, because I use a real big bag that takes care of everything. Recycling, yes, the open tops are a problem. It's, it's challenging to properly weigh down the refuse or the recycle items like the flimsy plastic, so they're lower in the container. It's a shame you don't have like a little flippy lid, lid or something like they have for industrial totes. Oh, we, they've taken note of that. We'll so otherwise, that. great tr presentation. And you put this in the... Oh. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Hello, my name is Emily Nitko Swanson. I've lived in Bolingbrook for the past four years with my husband. Um, full disclosure, I am pro covered recycle bins. That's where my stance, but I have two clarifying points that I'd like to comment and ask. Uh, clarifying point number one, whenever there's a follow-up to this meeting, I'd like a, an appended document uh, sent out, um, similar to what you all provided this, uh, earlier this evening, simply because I think that this is misleading based on the presentation that you provided. Um, to your point earlier, I think she's right over here. Uh, to your point earlier, all of the uh, you know, multimedia that you presented is a little biased. We don't have the full background as to if the other villages or cities around us have ordinances claiming that they are not allowed to have bins outside. So I'd like to know that. If one of the photos, for example, is Downers Grove, if they have the bins outside but it's not illegal for them to have the bins outside, then I think that's a moot point. So I'd like some fair comparison there. Um, following up on that, I think you made the comment about whenever you pick up your bin that there's some sort of an agreement that you enter into, you sign saying that, you know, your first offense, second offense, third offense, whatever it is. Um, I think you made the comment that on the third offense your toter's gone. Is that correct? Yeah. So then the option, if I'm understanding correctly, is that you can choose to either have a toter or not have a toter. Is that correct? So what, sure, understandable, but it sounds like that's an option. So for those people, and it seems like a small amount of people who this would be a big, um, a big inconvenience for, it sounds like they don't have to do this if they don't want to. So I would like to see some sort of a survey put out asking how many people in the village would like this, how many people would not. You can let the numbers speak for themselves. Um, and then for those who are impacted by this, who cannot have these toters because of space or whatever it is, they don't have to do it. They could have the same bag program, and then that wouldn't impact the rest of us that do want the toters. So I'd like to see some sort of a survey done on that, rather than just watching YouTube videos and hearing some people yelling from other sides of the rooms and, and that kind of thing. Thank you. I think I'm, I think I'm on. Mr. Mayor, thank you for having the meeting. I appreciate the opportunity to have a discussion on this. First of all, I'm very happy with groups. I think the current system is fine. Those things are the ugliest items you can have in front of your house, outside of old cars and so forth. They're ugly. Uh, I've lived in, say, previous to this town, a year ago we moved into a new home we had built in Americana Estates. Uh, we did have garbage floating around last year at this time, when we had those 50 mile an hour winds. And if you want a citation on where the heck, or whether or not we had 50 mile an hour winds, you can check with the uh, US Weather Bureau. But we had gale force going through there. And uh, it blew stuff around. So, one or two days out of a year, we had wind. Uh, as far as the uh, recycling bins, my simple solution was I picked up two. One goes on the top of the other, they go out to the curb. Stuff doesn't get blown around anymore. Uh, it's maybe not the best solution, but it works for me. And uh, I don't particularly care to have those things in, in my house, in front of my house, in my garage, in back of my house, 
from any place else. And I hope they heck we don't have them in our town. They're ugly. I've lived in, uh, in this state, I've lived uh, in Elmhurst, Northbrook, Clarendon Hills. In another state, uh, we had those, uh, that, those guys also. And yeah, they can go floating down the road. In a good storm, with a lot of rain and wind, they will float. If you want to use it as a hot tub, go right ahead. Uh, but they, they will do just what you're saying. And 10-year-olds can't tote them around very easily either. So I'm against changes. Other than the cost changes, I'm fine. You have to go and recover your costs. No problem with that. Anyway. Hi, my name is Robert Rivera. I've been here about 10 years. Um, I do not like the garbage bags outside. I think it's, um, it's unappealing. Um, I know a lot of people say it's unappealing to have on that day or you know, five days a week you have, because you know, everybody's set on different days, obviously, so every day there's garbage outside of people's homes. Um, for people to say that these garbage cans don't fit in the garage, because they got a one-car garage, I don't know what size garage you have. Is your car up, butted up from side to side, from side to side, front to front? And if it is, then maybe the vehicle you purchased was probably too big for that garage to begin with. But because of that, I think we're going to base it off because you can't fit your car in a garage and a garbage can, then we have to deal with the other end of having garbage sitting in our garage that's, that reeks, it stinks. Um, yes, I have a garbage can now in my garage now, just a simple garage. It fits about six bags. That can probably fit about six, seven bags. That's not overly sized. It's not, it doesn't have extra plastic from the actual opening of it to the outer side of it. Um, but I just think that that would, that would look for us, it would make us look more organized as the village. It makes it look, you know, better looking. Ugly for front of your house. I don't know if, if for the pictures you show them, those are very expensive homes. And I don't think somebody that was looking for a home would see that home and say, I'm not gonna buy that house because that garbage can's in the front. I mean, you can put it on the side of your home, keep them clean, put them on the side. I think it, it works well. But I think it would be more appealing to have some cans like that. We can set them on the side of the house than just having garbage. But plus, we have the problems with, you know, with all the animals and they tear all the bags up. And I start work at four in the morning. So I put it out at that time when I leave my home. So, you know, sometimes my wife has to pick up garbage and all the nastiness. So I'm, I'm sure there should be some options for that thing just to have garbage sitting outside in front of your home. But if you can't fit a garbage can like that in your garage, I think that's more of a personal problem. Evening, Your Honor. Evening, Your Honor. My name's Ron Troxel. I've been here about five years. Uh, so far, we've talked about the two options, uh, the plastic bags and the uh, uh, recycle bins that we currently use. And the totes is the other option. You know, the totes, obviously, you don't like because they're big and ugly and, um, you know, they don't seem to work for you. But everybody seems to be saying we've got trash cans in our garage now where we take our bags, put our bags in the trash can, then we take them out of the trash can, take them out to the curb on garbage day. Why can't we just use our trash cans? Just leave it in the trash can, take the trash can out to the curb, let the garbage truck collect them out of our trash cans and then put the trash can back in the garage and... It's got to, it's got to have this to lift it up. Well, that's if they've got a mechanical lifter. Right. But, you know, all trash cans have handles on the sides. You know, if we can lift it up to move it down to the curb, I, I would think that the, the trash collector could use those same handles to lift it and throw it into the collection bin. Yeah. Hmm? Well, I know they do now because that's the rule. If you put a trash can out, they consider it trash and they, they collect it and throw it away. Okay. I... Got it. Got it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to screw up the microphone. My name is Henry Kowalczyk. I live in Bolingbrook for 15 years. I moved similar like other people from the place where I had that similar total 
and I was first surprised when we didn't have it, but I have to say, uh, I started appreciating after a while the simplicity of the solution which we have. And it is correct, at the beginning, with the first few months, when there was the big wind, that blue can, I mean the blue uh, basket for the recycling, it was blown all over the neighborhood. So I learned that every time when the, the windy day, I put some heavy stuff on it, and when I put some boxes, I put a little bit higher edge. Since then, it never happened to me. It happened to my neighbors, and few of them I told what I'm doing, and they, know, they do it the same way. So simply, and it's the same when I left the garbage at night a few times. I came in the morning and there was, you know, uh, I don't know, I assume a raccoon or whatever. So I drop it right now in the morning. I uh, mean, so I left in the evening, but I, I now live in the morning, there is no problem. So, uh, and when that uh, Tata's issue came to the agenda, well, I spoke with my wife and she said, well, this is a very good idea. I said, darling, where will we put it? Oh, you will figure it out. Okay, so I don't want to figure it out. So what I'm trying to say, that listening to what people are saying here, I see there's a lot of uh, emotional engagement. Some people believe that this is the progress, this is the way we should have it. And there is some kind of, I think, a little bit irrational belief that if we do something different and more complicated, it will be better. I doubt that it will be. So this is, this is something which I'm kind of a little concerned and this is, I would like to bring some, something else uh, which maybe I can hope. Because what is going on, that this is an issue which is very antagonizing to the village, but this is not the issue which we need to decide today or tomorrow. We can give ourselves some time to negotiate it, collect the opinions, and try to find good ideas. And what I see that if People want that garbage, uh, those garbage cans, they should have them, but I don't want to pay for it. So simply what, what my suggestion is, that in other course of my activities, I invented the social media website, which is devoted to discussion of political issues and is called Virtual Agora. I just starting that. And if the community is interested, I can make it available and we can analyze all those things which people bring here in a certain organized fashion. It may take us maybe a little longer, but we'll go deeper to the better understanding what are the options, how much it's going to cost, and how we can do it. So simply virtualagora.net, my name is Henry Kowalczyk, village is uh, familiar with my offer. So simply, if people are interested, I will gladly hope, and that's all. Thank you, Henry. By the way, the question was asked, if we had toters, would the garbage still have to be put in plastic bags? I guess theoretically not, but in the event would one happen to blow over, even though I know they'll never blow over and they'll never wash the ditch here, that's been made clear, but if they would happen to be tipped over, Loose garbage would be a bigger mess than if you had it in four or five kitchen bags. So the preference would be to put it in some kind of a bag in the container. Yes. Hi, my name is Kathy Tomlinson, um, and I've lived in the village for 40 years. It's a fabulous place, so the, you know, it's grown, it's done great. But if I understand you correctly, you're saying that the village is going to take on the billing for this refuge service, correct? Yes. Okay, so if that's the case, I'm assuming there's software involved, people involved to do this billing, which is going to add to the cost. True, but the cost reduction will be counter offset by the, them not doing it. Okay, so does Groot have the ability to take on the billing themselves, where the village would not have to foot the bill for the software? The well, it's going to be paid for, whether it's paid for through the contract or we okay. build it in. So somebody will pay for it. Okay, I understand also you said that for round numbers, I pay $10,000 a year in taxes. $1,000 of that goes to the village of Bolingbroke. Yes, if your Correct. tax bill is 10000 In round yeah, numbers. About 10% is village. Okay, what part of that $1,000 is considered refuge collection? It's not really a percentage. It fluctuates from year to year. 
based on the cost. Uh, the whole refuse bill goes on the private act bill, but so do so does village debt, so do pensions, police, fire. No but operational costs go on there. But I understand you said that the village is subsidizing the refuge because you're not getting the full amount from us from the residents. I looked on the budget today and it says that the refuge service is five million seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars. That's about right, yes. At two hundred and forty dollars a resident times twenty four thousand residents, that would cover your line item for the budget. Well, some people pay a proportion less because their assessed value is less. Others pay significantly more because they have a more expensive home. Okay. So some people pay some people pay five and six hundred dollars a year for refuse collection because they have a more expensive home. Well, okay. So those that are paying ten and twelve thousand dollars are paying more yes. for the service. But it's on our tax bill, so we have a tax deduction. Basically. Well, it's probably not gonna be true after this year, but yes. Right, if you're taking it off the tax bill, is it realistic for me to see a $240 deduction on my tax bill? Or since the village is subsidizing, I did talk to a trustee who said that part, that $1,000 that's going to the village of Bolingbrook on my tax bill, 10% of that is to cover refuse. No, 10% of it goes for police, pensions, fire pensions, debt service, yes. All those things. Correct, correct. So there's all these percentages that make up 100% of the $1,000 that my tax bill goes to the village. Correct? Yeah. Okay. So if you are now taking this off my tax bill and billing it for the total cost of the refuse service, what happens to that $5,700,000 line item in the budget for next year? That. Or the year that this goes through? That's going to go for police and fire pensions. That service. Police and fire pensions this year went up how much? Police and fire pensions went up how much this year? They're going up that rate every year. We keep absorbing it. And that's Correct. fine. We have to absorb that. But it's on the property tax bill, which is getting inflated. And we've been talking about taking refuse off the garbage bill for years. In order to go right. to totals, we'd have to do it for direct billing because if it's an option, which it probably would be, if you want to toter, you'll pay $7 a, a week or a month for toters, and you won't. So you'll be direct billed for that extra money. That's... Okay, so this this increase in the police and fire pensions, that's where this five, five million... That's some of it, yes. Okay. You were at the village. You know our costs are going up. Well, I also went online today to see what's been budgeted for police and fire pensions. And, and part of it is, I think, is deceiving. The new because budget comes up in about a month. That's correct. the current year's budget. This correct. budget expires Correct. April I went back 30th. five years to the okay. budgets online. I tried to compare what the village has budgeted to what they actually took in to see how the month. Unfortunately, the actual treasurer's reports for the last two fiscal years, not the current year, are not online. So I wasn't able to compare it, but the budgets that I've seen for police and fire pension for the last two years showed an increase minimally for budgeting. So I guess I'm wondering if, if police and fire pensions are going up that much, why would the village budget not show Because we've that? been subsidizing general revenue from other sources to pick up this cost. We can't do that anymore. And like. 99% of the communities in Chicagoland, we're going to put direct billing on the garbage, take it off the property tax bill because it's an artificially inflated garbage or uh, property tax bill. Everybody else direct bills. Well, I understand. You know, I understand the but woman earlier said $74 for water and garbage pickup. You'll find it all over the place, folks. Communities subsidize different things. Uh, Chicago for years gave $5 a month for water. They've since changed that and they've upped it significantly. So you can't just look at a number and make a direct comparison. And Kathy, I'd be happy to show you the treasury report. Uh, Rosa sitting over the director of finance. She doesn't. She thinks they're up. I don't know what you're looking at or what she's where, where that mistake is. But yes, we're going to take some of it off the tax bill this year. We hope to take more off next year. But we're going to go to direct billing. Okay. Well, I, I understand that. And me as a taxpayer now, not as an employee of the village. You know, I look at my $10,000 a year that I'm paying in taxes to live in the town, and I love my house. 
you know, I love where I live, but I'm, I'm kind of a little bit confused as far as, you know, reimbursing or not reimbursing. You guys are subsidizing the garbage. I don't think a lot of people knew that. A lot of people they just don't. thought, oh, they, you know, they do. They, they do a now. A neighboring community picks up rep, or, uh, yard waste and they openly burn it on the far west and south end of their town. Well, I'm not, I don't want to identify the community. But they do that and they do not charge the residents for it. Why? I don't know. But it's a cost to have right, employees right. pick up yard and waste. And I was here when we had the little stickers for the garbage. It was a nightmare also. You know, I, I worked in finance for a while when we sold the stickers. It was a nightmare. Um, I appreciate that they pick up the, the lawn waste with no, no sticker on the bag. You just put a bag out there. I have 15, 20 a week. I also have six recycling 15 buckets. 15 to 20 bags a week? I do. Of refuse. Of lawn waste. They've never had a problem. They've always picked it up. You know, so the service is great. I just, I kind of have, need to get an understanding of if we're taking it off the tax bill, we're paying the entire 5700000 And okay, if that's fair. I also wonder that the, the sales tax, the, the state of Illinois sales tax has to be increasing given WeatherTech and the mall and Ikea and all the huge businesses that are here in town. It's been flat most of the last year. The last three months has gone up around five to six percent. But in our budget workshops in about a, four to six weeks, we'll be looking at all the new numbers for next year's budget. And as you all know, you're invited. And do you know when that budget workshop is? What? Do you know the date of the budget workshop? They're published. I don't know the dates off the top of my head, but they're published. The 14th? Okay, so as of you when was this? Ask Ken on tomorrow morning. He'd, he'd tell you. I don't, I don't work here anymore. <laughs> so as a resident, I can go to the website. I understand yes. that. So April 14th? Okay. Saturday morning, 8 a.m. Okay. Thank you. All right. Excuse me. I really don't mind standing here till the end, but this line just continues to grow, and that's somewhat reflective of the fact that how complicated this issue is, because every question begs another question. I don't know what that means. Yes. Hi, my name is Mary Wolak. We've lived here since 1972. I can't imagine living anyplace else. We've moved within town three times. It's great. I think you answered one of my questions before. Um, if we choose not to have a toter and the neighbor wants one, that's okay. They got a place to keep it? If they have a place to keep it, yes. Okay. You, do not, you will not have to have one. Okay. For those people, then there's a big area in Fernwood that doesn't have garages. There are some single family homes that don't have garages. Are they going to have to build a shed? Are they going to be allowed to put them, well, the single family, in their backyard? Fernwood, God knows where they're going to put them in their kitchen. A good part of Fernwood has dumpsters. Okay. So one subdivision can say no. The rest of the town can say single family homes can make their own choices. Well, that hasn't been decided yet, but that is, a, that is an option. Okay. Yes. Now, I do understand that we vote for you and for the trustees to make decisions for the town. But seeing how, as how this has such a line, and I do understand there's a long time between now and November, is there any way that a referendum could be put on the ballot in November as to whether we have these things and whether they could be left out, outside? And let the people vote for it. And if you don't want to come out and vote, your problem. That gets well, off your back, Roger. <laughs> in this country, approximately 54% of the people bother to vote for president. Oh, well. Okay. I know, oh, well. Therefore. In a gubernatorial election, it's typically 35 to 40 percent. This primary last week was about 21 percent. I understand. You're one. So we'll have to do what you want rather I know than that, what the but majority that show up to vote want. This is a representative government. All these people were elected to represent I understand. Village. I voted for them. Well, but that's you're going to have that's really more doesn't of a matter. problem. The point is to put all these things up to a, a referendum kind of negates the reason we it's have It's not all these government. things. It's one thing because the town is so divided. It's not so divided. 
Okay. So it's the kids versus the old folk, is that it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Exactly. <laughs> There were other reasons, believe yeah. me. Yes. Okay, thank you. There you go. Hey, my name is Frank. I lived here for about four years. Um, I just want to say thank you for everyone coming out. You were amazing, little girl. That was awesome. That guy that just left, he was amazing. Where did he go? That guy was amazing. He was right, freedom. You know, everyone deserves to have freedom about what they want and what they don't want, right? I understand that. I came here with, with one, one thing in mind. I, I've lived in Chicagoland my whole life. I've lived in Elk Grove, I've lived in Carpentersville, I've lived everywhere. We've always had toters. Even when I was in a townhouse, we had, a to we had toters. Both of these things, actually it was that small one. Had it my whole life. And when I came here, it was the first time I've n I threw my trash at the end of the driveway. I thought it was crazy. Until I actually saw it. And I was like, this is just what everyone does? Are you kidding me? And I have to clean everyone else's trash up out of my yard. Every gar the day after garbage day, every day, you know th these. Pe you, you hear it over and over again. I just want to say my piece that we we do have to clean the garbage up after garbage day. When I've lived in neighborhoods where we've had the toters, I did not have to clean my garbage up after garbage day. It's just facts. I, I've had them my whole life, and I understand that there are people in smaller uh, areas like condos, apartments, or the elderly where they don't have room. You know, I lived in a neighborhood in Carpentersville that had little, con little condos, townhouses, and bigger townhouses. The condos had dumpsters, like that McDonald's you showed us. There was the enclosure, and the, the condos and apartments had the dumpsters. If you're going to keep all your stuff in bags, you could have just a central dumpster instead of those totes, because I agree, some of the smaller houses on the other side of Bolingbrook that is, you know, were built 40, 50 years ago, the garage ain't holding those. They, it was the, the cars are much bigger today. I believe you. But in areas like that, there could be a dumpster. And, and instead of you dumping your d garbage bags on the end of your driveway, you could put them in an actual dumpster. Maybe it'll be a couple extra hundred yards, but there's middle ground here, right? Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Eric Swanson. I'm, I live on uh, Lenox Avenue. Um, I just had a few comments. Um, One's a general story that I had. Um, I did your suggestion where I put my garbage out uh, at, in the morning, um, went to work, I had to come home at lunch, and I came home at lunch and I saw, I'm not a zoologist, but a bunch of birds just like digging into, into my trash, in my, in my bags. Um, crazy, tried to get them away, whatever, they, they stayed. Uh, cut to about 20 minutes later, I see the garbage man coming by. I mean, this dude was moving. You, you saw the you saw the move, the video. He's 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 flinging garbage into his truck. He comes over, picks up my bag, rips the bag. Garbage goes flying everywhere. It was an intact bag when I put it on onto the ground. And midday, animals got into the garbage bag. So uh, that's just just a side note there. Um, I, just looking through the sheet that you provided us, I noticed that we're the only one listed here that does not have a tote option. Is that correct? Yes. Shouldn't we? This meeting's about tonight. Well, yeah, you, you keep saying it's so complicated, but it really doesn't sound that complicated. It's just how to give us an option. So where do you put it? No, that's not, no, no, that, then just don't, just, then don't take it. That's the option. You have it or you don't. Well, I'm not so sure everybody feels that way. Well, no, no, no. You, you can do it per resident. Do you want a tote? Yes. Do you not? No. No, give it to them. Well, as I said earlier, if somebody, if we do go to an option, okay. people will have to sign up for it and have to sign a statement. It will be kept inside. Okay. Well, then that's fine. And then that, that sounds like you keep saying uh, answers lead to more questions, but it sounds like we're resolving it right now. And it's not really that complicated. It's just you have the tote option, like, most of these other uh, cities nearby have. Just give us the option, and that resolves everything. So uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Ed. I've been living in this wonderful town for 18 years. I have a daughter that lives in Plainfield. And she, yes, she does have the totes. I have seen the totes 
keeping the yard cleaner than what they are now. The, uh, the recycles don't go a whole lot of places, and the garbage is always picked up. So I agree with the totes. I promote them, and I wish we do get them. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you all for coming out tonight. Sure. Hi, I'm Bob Jaskowitz. I'm a trustee as well. <clears throat> and uh, first of all, like Roger started to say, thank everyone for coming out tonight. Great turnout for this event. <clears throat> Excuse me. One thing we haven't heard is from Groot themselves, and I know you did mention that at the beginning that they were going to talk about the pros and cons of, of that. You service 70 communities, correct, you said? Out of those 70, how many have the system we have and how many have totes? In most of them, there's optional carts or cart power. Is there any community that just does garbage bags like us? Uh, yes. Uh, who is that? Off the top of my head, I can name uh, Hoffman Estates, Palatine, Arlington Heights all had. At one time, they all had bag programs, but Palatine and Hoffman Estates currently do. Bags only at the curb. And if you don't mind, just what are the pros and cons of doing it our way versus doing it your way? We've, we've been discussing we've kind of gone through the pros and cons already. Well, we want to repeat it all. In your mind, what are the pros for doing totes, and what are the cons? There's pros and cons to every program. Every village has different options of how they do things. Uh, we like the program here in Bowenbrook. We like the bags. We like the you know that's a program we've been working on for decades. Um, carts. They have their, their, their pros, but they are expensive. They're expensive to purchase. They're expensive uh, for towns to purchase if they want to purchase them. They're expensive to rent. Um, these carts are not cheap to make. So um, I, I give you pros and cons. I think we've been talking about them all night. I think, I think uh, the mayor has as well. Um, every program has to be specifically fit and, 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 and put into the, to the community that they fit. And I think they're turning the lights out on us. <laughs> Enough from the garbage man. And if we offer the option, is that a possibility for you to adapt to? Are there logistics there so that you can have trucks so that they can pick up bags and or toters? So it is an option. Okay. And then the question that came up a couple times was on the billing process. We're going to bill quarterly, roughly $60 a quarter. What are the options for people? What happens to people who don't pay that bill? What are the options for them? We take them to court. And if they're, if they're seniors or people on low income who are struggling now <clears throat> and the money was coming out of their taxes and they don't see that immediate relief, are, are we offering an option to help them with that? Well, for those people who can't afford this, and I know you know the answer to this, but I'll tell you again for the benefit of the audience, if there's somebody that's short to pay their water bill, gas bill, electric bill, there are a number of programs. There's a township general assistance. There's uh, different programs, the Will County Center of Community Concerns. There's churches that help people. And those issues are dealt with. If they come to our attention, we deal with them one at a time. Have for years, and we'll continue. Okay, so we will have a, a program in place or an avenue to send them to if they need help. As we do now. <clears throat> okay. But thank you all for coming. I do appreciate you coming and voicing your opinions. Um, based on what I heard, I know that everybody, at least 99% of the people want lids on their recycle bins of some type, you know, because of the trash. <laughs> what, what, what percent? Huh? What percent did you say? About 99%. 99%. Well, about the recycle bins. Okay. Well, I just didn't, I didn't, I didn't, okay, 99%. Well, my opinion, your opinion. <laughs> but there is a big, a big void on these things. And so we do have to work on that quite a bit. So thank you.
But Peg. First of all, I want to uh, thank you all for coming out tonight. You know, several people said, why are you chairing this thing? Why don't you dump it off on a staff member to make this presentation? Well, I want to do it myself because, I, one, I want to be here and I want to ask questions. I want to be able to follow up questions. I know that there are people that are going to be unhappy regardless of what we decide to do. But that's what people are elected in this government, in this, this state, in this national, nation, is to be elected to make decisions for what's best for the whole. And uh, there's going to be different opinions. I hear them, I've heard them for a very long time. But uh, we wanted to hear what you had to say. I got heard some new things tonight. I heard a lot of things the same. And if those videos bothered some of you because they seem to be prejudiced, we all know what the bag program and the blue band program looks like. I knew there were people that perhaps had not seen what happens to a, re, uh, a toter. So that's why they were interjected. But it's not a simple issue. And I know the gentleman a moment ago said, it is simple, yes or no? Well, it's not that simple. Sorry, I misled you. It's, it's saying it's, it's, I, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you all. Have a good night. Have a safe drive home.